Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Winback and on today's episode of RPG Radio we're playing some more Grim Dawn and we're doing some more build stuff because I have been sitting on this build for quite a while. This is my weapon swap theory crafting build and uh, we're gonna see how far we can take it. Right now we're only in normal on the game Things have been a little bit difficult getting going, if I'm being honest, because the build is really squishy. And because of the, uh, well, nature of things and all the damage that the, the build has baked in, um, things are just going to get, mm, not more difficult, but kind of dicey in terms of uh, figuring out how the best, or how best the, the, build actually plays weapon swapping is possible in grim dawn i don't use it on anything but this build however because i wasn't really sure if there was a good use for it up until this point the whole reason i'm even doing this one is because the uh, the class that i am on is an inquisitor and a night blade at the same time so the idea is to have one side of the build in melee and then the other side of the build in ranged with abilities between the two of them that will support both uh, both sides of play passively. So the Inquisitor has uh, the dual wielding skill that will let you use two ranged weapons. And then the Nightblade has the melee version of that that will let you use two, uh, two ranged weapons. So, or two melee weapons. The thing I just said that I forgot that I said um anyway the the two of them together do have a fair amount of uh well the inquisitor themselves the the inquisitor class does does uh a considerable amount of elemental damage so you've got your pick of the litter when it comes to dealing damage with fire lightning or uh cold uh, and uh, seeing as how the Nightblade does a lot of cold damage as well, that is what we're going to do. We're going to do fire damage and cold damage. We're going to do just absolute polar opposites. Uh, just as as far as we can take it. There will be some lightning every now and again, but I wouldn't get, uh, wouldn't get too attached to that. At least, probably not towards the end of the game. I wonder why that went over there. Seems like a weird place for it to go. Anyway, uh, so I guess let's talk about abilities because I'm sure you've noticed by now that there are a couple that are uh, doing quite a bit of damage for this build. Though I don't, I don't really think I use these abilities in any other build. Then again, I haven't played a whole lot of Inquisitor on the channel so maybe that is why but the abilities that you're seeing are the rune of hagard and the rune of uh Kalistor. both of those are the uh, sigils that we're dropping on the ground one is fire one is cold and they do pretty obscene amounts of damage with the amount of points that we've got in there love it when they just live through all the damage uh, on top of that, we have the passive skills of both dual blades and ranged expertise uh, with a few points as well. And then there is also Word of Pain, and we just recently got to the point where we could take Blade Trap. So the idea is that you are going to basically uh, pepper them down with range from very far away. And then when they are nice and softened up, you'll go in with the melee for the killing blow, which is going to be Shadow Strike. The melee on this class is not really a stand there and take it kind of uh, melee, like most of the uh, tanky classes that we played up till now, because this build is rather squishy. I'm just trying to get down to the... Uh, just trying to get down to the steps of torment so we can do a bit of key dungeon grinding to see if we can get anywhere with this build 
it's really just the first test of things. Is it going good? Is it going bad? How do you know? But anyway, all that being said, uh, Blade Trap is still very young in its points phase. It hasn't even hit points puberty yet, so it's not doing much. The entrapment duration is pretty low, and the um, damage it's dealing isn't exactly where I want it to be either. That being said, you gotta start it sometime, so why not have it in the video at least. Ooh, more runes! The other cool thing about this build is that we're uh, using Amaras' Blade Burst, except we're only using it when we are in ranged mode for the build. And the cool thing about that is that Amaras has a 100% has a activation rate every time that you use it with well it's tsunami tsunami is the uh the ability that you're seeing every time we hit amarasas as long as uh, tsunami is off of cooldown it will fire out that wave and it's really fantastic because amarasas is dealing uh it's dealing cold damage in an aoe and that is what tsunami is doing as well so Again, since we're doing frost and fire, pretty good stuff. They just keep funneling in so we can hack them up. Word of Pain also it does both fire and cold damage, which is really cool. Um, so it just kind of is everything that we need from a damage source. Did that not go anywhere? What happened to my... It's weird. I think that rune just disappeared. And the only sad part about this build is that you have to like let them walk into the uh, walk into the runes because the runes take a little bit of time to arm. I think they take about one and a half seconds. Um, but with that, we also end up taking artifact handling on the Inquisitor side of things to reduce the cooldown. Of our of our runes of our minds and uh, increase the damage by quite a bit so the other devotion that I ended up taking that is probably gonna be permanent is uh, Amatok the Herald of Winter who has Blizzard and Blizzard activates 100% of the time that there is a crit uh, and because the rune of guard hits in uh, such a big AOE, it is is doing pretty decent damage as long as we hit that crit. So offensive ability is going to be really important when it comes to this build. Got a crit a lot, so we can do a lot of blizzards, but um, also because dealing damage is just it's nuts. Period. Ooh, this is a boss that I did not have the easiest time with. Um, even though we are dumping absolutely tons of runes underneath him, he he just does not like to die. And seeing as how half of our damage is uh, fire, we do we got to do a lot of diving and duffing and dodging, dicking. You get what I'm you get what I'm doing. You get where I'm going. Oh God! And since our melee isn't the kind of stand there and take it. Uh, that I'm so used to on this channel can't even go in for the killing blow and life steal off of this guy. Is Arthuzalan any basically anybody with a lot of uh, a lot of elemental resist is going to be unfortunate. He doesn't even move because he's ranged. He just likes to stand there and be a douchebag. Anyway, um, that said, we're whittling him down. I don't know how that's going to. I don't know how it's gonna work once we get, you know, to actual difficult enemies down in the key dungeon, but it's fine. I'm sure we'll find out together and it'll be a happy, fun adventure for everybody. But that also leads into the other big ability that's gonna be important for this. Get out of here. This guy's always here. Uh, these always spawn here, no matter what uh, time you are on coming down into the dungeon. So, basically, the the thing that I'm trying to say is that we'll need the Word of Renewal. That's what it is. 
Word of Renewal is the uh, the third skill that we have on the action bar there. It is a heal, and it is giving us movement speed. And I believe at some point it's going to do even more than that. Let's see. Reducing damage from Chthonics and the Eldritch isn't really a big deal. Uh, upping defensive ability, also not why I want it. Let's see. Increasing damage. No, reducing... Reducing CC is good. No, I guess I was thinking of something else. Maybe I was thinking of um, Blood of Dreg for the Fizz Res. Like to throw the knives, please. Uh, at this point, too, in the game, it's still so early on, the damage is just affecting everything perfectly. So a lot of stuff is dying just to the runes, and we don't really have a huge need to use our melee ability just yet. Which is a little bit sad, but it's going to take a little bit of training for my brain to get used to swapping the weapons. Um, as far as uh, melee is concerned, or as far as weapon swapping itself is concerned, that is... Excuse me. There's a chest right there. You gonna come over here. You just gotta go around. I'm stupid. Anyway, the uh, the weapon swap button, I have it fixed to two, because I'm not using the two key, uh, basically, ever. But you can attach it to whatever you want to. I don't even remember what the standard one is. Um, maybe tab? But I have that for minimap, because, you know, Diablo uh, ingrained that button into me for minimap. That's where it's going to stay forever, no matter what game I'm playing, as long as it has a map that I need to look at. Uh, so, that being said, 2 is what I use, and uh, it is fairly responsive, I'd say, but there is probably a 10% uh, chance that you don't get the weapon swap because your character is in uh, some animation, or he's in the middle of casting something, or doing something, and the game's just like, nah, we're going to eat that input, and you're going to uh, maybe die. So, it is a squishy class, you know. Have your, have your expectations prepared for that. This isn't going to be a standstill and, uh, you know, root and 2D, scoot and shooty kind of build. It's going to be scary, I promise. Especially once we get further up in, uh... Oh, further up in difficulty. I am actually terrified how this is going to go, even in Elite, because uh, I don't have... Stay over there. I don't have a whole lot of faith in my health bar right now. I'm hoping that changes with some gear, but <laughs> it's going to be a little bit silly. I'm already assuming. I think I've only died once or twice. I think it's just once. And that's just because I wasn't paying attention. And the health bar poofed out of existence as they are prone to doing. Do that, what do you mean? Where did you throw the knives if they didn't hit the enemies? Blade trap, you are letting me down, dog. Uh, we do have some um, item equipped abilities as well, but it's not really what I'm after. Diplomacy is... Uh, it comes from the Herald set, and it's supposed to like confuse or blind enemies. I don't know. It's uh, super inconsistent, and seeing as how it is impossible to get to work on bosses, I won't be hanging on to it for long. I'm mainly just using the set right now because more stats are better than no stats. Because the melee weapons that we have currently are kind of... Uh, well, I'm using them more for the monster infrequent abilities that they provide rather than the stats themselves. The, uh, the damage coming off of the melee weapons is not exactly where I need it to be. But I'll show you those in a bit here, assuming I live. Jesus. Switch. Shadow strike all the way over here. That's how we do it. Drop some more runes. Confuse some people. There we go. 
thin the herd a little bit. But really, this is kind of how it just works. You're, uh, you gotta do a lot of kiting, sadly. Which, again, not something I'm used to. Not that typical class that I wanna play. But if this works out anything like my purifier does, it's probably gonna end up being a really fun class. Just with all the, the bullets and stuff all over the place. Your only real mobility tool, at least until level 50, is gonna be Shadow Strike. So, oh no, I don't want that near me. Get out of here. Get these down, slow them down, trap them, get them blown up. All of the mobs just absolutely disappearing from the map because of the runes. It's really good stuff. Even if one of them triggers uh, triggers it from the middle of the pack. There is a big enough AOE on those runes that they'll spread out and take out the front and the back of the pack as well. It's fantastic. Which way do I need to go? Something tells me up is wrong, but I can't remember. I can never remember. And I think it changes every time anyway, because reasons. Good there, open up the closet, watch all the enemies pile on towards enemies here. No, stop, oh no, don't bring them out. Yeah, I wasn't ready. Dang it. If we can find a monster shrine at any point down here, I'll show you the best part of this build, or the best part of just using an Inquisitor period if you are going to be the type of person who plays with the runes. My god. I hate the uh, the ranged skeletons. It's really bad that they do so much damage. Ranged anything that's dealing pierce damage is absolutely unforgivably uh, difficult to deal with. Not to mention all my resistances are kind of in the normal frame of reference anyway, so that is to say that they are bad. They're very low, and the armor that we're dealing with right now, anyway, isn't uh, gonna make that easier anytime soon. Put those down, get them blasting off. He's gonna walk over this. All the kiting in the world would not make this man any easier to deal with. God, his health is just enormous. Blast him. Chop. All right, there we go. Do I want this? I do want this. Wow, that's pretty good. Ilgor dropping another monster in frequent that is looking pretty tasty. And if you guys would just stop funneling through the door, I'd love to read what's happening. It's really cool that the cooldown on those things is so short because of artifact handling. Oh, all right, guys. At this point, I'm just like, I need you to fuck off. Just completely off. Everybody get out of my... Ooh, this is my room. You're not allowed in it. All right. Ilgore's Eternal Curse of Mending. Three to Blade Burst. I'm not using Chilling Rounds and Vitality Damage. Sounds kind of dumpy as well. Adding... Weapon damage to blade burst and chilling rounds. It's not as good as I thought it was going to be. So we're going to stick with Martin's Crest of Meditation for the uh, plus one projectile, the Callistor, and the increased... Ooh, Dunga. It's good. It's good. Let me put some points in here as well. Actually, you know what? Let's cap out artifact handling. Level 10 gonna give them an additional 12% damage, 20% crit damage, and take the cooldown down by 1.5 seconds. So 2.4, 2.4. Perfect! Here we go. Uh, let me go get the chest. That skill's not ready. You just, you know, you know whenever there's a chest laying about, there's going to be enemies that just randomly spawn from the nether, the warp calls us all home, and then they step on a mine, everybody explodes, and it's a good day. So as long as you know where the enemies are going to be coming from, this type of damage is gross in a good way. Just absolutely disgusting levels of damage to unsuspecting enemies, and that 
Honestly, when they're going for a surprise attack, when they're trying to catch me with my pants down, maybe I'll just pull their pants down instead. I'm wearing a belt. What are you going to do? Uh, one of the... I really can't believe it. There's one. I see it. Ran another of those pits. We stack all of these up here. Here we go. See that? Took a huge, huge chunk of the bad guys out just by slapping down some random runes. Even if they don't step on them immediately, that doesn't mean they're not going to because the AI is just... Uh, Shortest distance between point A and point B, please. I was not ready for those guys, though. Oh, oh, we're looking spooky. Jet out of here. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, arranged stuff going on. Can we swap weapons, please? So annoying. Ugh. Uh, as of right now, as far as the relic that we're using, uh, I... it's not one that I use very often. It uh, It's basically 15% chance on attack. We're going to fling some... Are you kidding? You didn't even hit him. You just punched the terrain. Anyway. Stay over there. I don't like you. Oh my god, why are they so tanky all the time? Mm. I don't even have nights to chill on. It doesn't really make a lot of difference. It's not helping a whole lot at this moment, and it's more for helping the uh, melee. Mm. Am I being attacked? Stay away from me, I'm buying things. Yes, I do need this. We're going to swap it out for the one that we've got. Can't be sold. That's fine. Whatever. I don't care. Perfect. Ooh, the ghostly vendor coming in clutch, selling us a very important weapon. That may end up being a monster infrequent that we hold on to throughout the entirety of the game. Um, that means ultimate, elite, all that stuff. I think making Shadow Strike the like the Executioner's Axe is important um, because if I don't have Shadow Strike, that means enemies aren't going to die when I go in melee. Can I? What are we doing here? Oh, good, the game bugged. I love it when that happens. The uh, game hasn't caught up with the fact that the door went down, so we're just kind of stuck outside it getting pelted by ranged there we go finally caught up just getting pelted by ranged uh, damage which is unavoidable with this class and it's just gonna do a lot of damage too so uh, the good news is that I do want to put a lot of deflect as much as we can we may end up taking the um, uh, what is it pneumatic burst uh, pneumatic burst and uh, and word of renewal. Uh, right now we've got word of renewal over pneumatic burst because one of the items that we have is adjusting it to deal some fire damage on top of all of its regular stuff. Uh, but pneumatic burst, the upgrades for it let you or they, they give you uh, dodge and deflect chances. So they increase that passively. As long as you've got that, I think it's Shadow Dance is what it's called. Oh cool, mine's on the ground for the bad guys too. Stop stealing my ideas. Um, yeah, but as long as you've got Shadow Dance going, uh, or selected and Pneumatic Burst is going, you will get an increased dodge and deflect chance. And that is your chance to avoid melee attacks and projectiles. So if we have a large chance to dodge projectiles, a lot of the damage that we have to worry about is just going to get fucking nullified. Absolutely deleted from existence. Man, there's a lot of them. Where's that monster shrine? I want to do the funds. here get one of these chop you stay away from the mines 
Uh, as far as, uh, you know, kind of theory crafting for what this build is going to be doing in the uh, later ends of the game, I know that we're going to need to put a lot more points into uh, Blade Burst, number one, because that is a, it's basically a shotgun for damage when it comes to the ranged side of our abilities. Uh, but beyond that, I think we're going to have to put a lot more points into Deadly Aim, which is the Inquisitor side of things that increases your crit chance while you're doing the shooties. Oh no, I don't want to be here yet. I'm not quite ready to go at the boss. And considering that a lot of my kit isn't going to affect the boss a whole lot, that's a little bit more upsetting. But, maybe we can kind of sneak in there without triggering his aggro and drop a whole bunch of mines all over the place. I think that would be pretty hysterical. There we go. Ah, okay. Where's the monster shrine? We have to... It's so far away. I didn't see it when I was close to it. Apologies, I gotta walk back. I gotta walk all the way back because this is the best part of the build. It's truly just probably the best part of playing Inquisitor, if we're being honest. Um, yeah, there we go. I'm melt those dudes real quick. If you haven't guessed by now, we're just going to dump a whole lot of mines on a shrine and then watch the enemies implode as they are summoned, you know? probably not a very creative solution that anybody didn't think of but uh it looks amazing so you just have to watch it happen because it's perfect sir you're not invited to the party you need to just leave we can get with the reduced cooldown that's about 10 I mean, that was a whole bunch of skeletal gargantuans. And they just evaporated. I, ooh, man, that is some top tier business, if we are being honest about it. I'm out of space. Bummer. Let's see, is there anything in here worth picking up? That could be all right. Did I just drop that? We'll never know. Mm, 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 mm. That's a two-handed sword, isn't it? Frick. Oop, wrong button. Frick and frack. Nothing good out of the shrine, but at least it didn't waste a million years of our time because, my God, they just disappeared. It was like, it was like going to a magic show and the opening act... No, nope. I had something, and then it's gone. I was thinking of that movie uh, with Steve Carell in it where he makes the audience disappear. And then I went on a tangent about Steve Carell movies in my brain. So <laughs> you can thank the attention deficit disorder for that. All right, let's open up this gate. Get in there. The uh, Lord High Executioner. Who? Who? Can I do it? I'm... Okay, let's see if the cheese works. I'm pretty sure he can run over here. Alright. Hit him with Word of Pain. Add him to aggro a bit. Wow, that was a lot of damage. Uh, I may have uh, screwed myself up. So... No? Okay, okay. You just... You gotta walk on those. There you go. Nice. Get a little bit of healing going. We do not want to be anywhere near him. His damage is ridiculous. Uh, and he's just going to keep going for it. Oh my god. I thought I was in ranged. Mm. No. Don't. Oh, stop. Please. Oh my god. There it is. Did we get him? Is he dead? Nope, he's still alive. Does he? Wait a minute. 
there's no way that he's just dodging everything, right? Why does he deal so much damage? Why am I so puny? Oh. Stop, sir. This is a Wendy's. I'm gonna die. I'm going to die all the way at the end. He's just going to freeze me and kill me. Where's my potion? Nope. Stay over there. This is, this is terrifying. This is absolutely terrifying. I hate this. Playing squishy characters is so, so, oh, it's it's like playing a survival horror game. Like, oh, excuse me, sir. Do you know who I am? I'm an action RPG player. Oh, thank God. You ever run around in circles so hard? I mean, probably, but that doesn't make it any less terrifying. Can't pick that up. Blues. Uh, we did pick up a lot of blues throughout the uh, the dungeon. I, I should give it a bit more credit. Get out of here, pants. I want this thing. Hmm. Well, I mean, apart from the minor freak out there at the end, this is kind of the build so far. I mean, we're pretty early on as far as things are considered, but uh, it it's fun. I mean, it feels good, right? Yeah, it's not bad. It's going to be a little bit goofy, I think, but not goofy in a bad way. So once I get it a little bit fleshed out more, I'll uh, I'll tell you guys where I'm at next week. I don't know if it's going to be ultimate worthy next week. So this video series may be a little bit longer, but, you know, tune in next time. Leave me some comments about how this is the dumbest thing anyone's ever done with their time in Grim Dawn. I'm sure that's what you're thinking. It's still a lot of fun, though, so I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.